how to sculpt. Ooh, baby, how to sculpt. <laughs> Hi, I'm Mr. Pink, otherwise known as Modern Synthesis, and this is another episode of How to Sculpt, this time focusing on how to lube your tools for sculpting. So you can see here, I've got three different kinds of lube. I've got Nivea cream, I've got Vaseline, and I've got water. So what we're going to do is on this piece of plastic art here, I'm going to sculpt with some pure green stuff. I'm not going to mix any epoxy sculpt or anything in it because green stuff on its own is one of the stickiest putties you could use. And I'm going to show you hopefully how sticky it is on your tools when you're lubing with different items and like how far you can go before it starts sticking. As well as I'm going to take this piece of plastic card once we're done, I'm going to prime it and I'm going to show you that you don't need to wash your models if you're using Nivea as your lubricant. I've never used Vaseline, but people keep talking about Vaseline. So I figured I'd do this. And of course I've used water before when I was a chump before I knew that Nivea was the way to go. On a piece of plastic card, I'm just going to label the four different tests we're going to do. So test number one is going to be nothing. So no lubricant whatsoever on the green stuff. Test number two is going to be lubing with water. Test number three is going to be Nivea. And test number four is going to be Vaseline. So you'll know which one's which as I'm working with it. You can't see that too well because of the reflection, but uh, you'll know the top one one is nothing, second one's water, third one's Nivea, fourth one's Vaseline. When I mix up my green stuff, this is an important tip for whenever you're using it. I, mean, I keep my green stuff in these uh, spice tins. They're magnetic, so I can stick them onto any metal I have in my workspace. They're not fancy or anything. Green stuff doesn't tend to really dry out. It will get old after a while, but these things are not airtight, so you can just keep it in here. Um, I also keep my epoxy sculpt in similar ones, but it dries out a bit, so that's not great. But I just really like the magnetic bit, so I don't keep a ton in there at a time. Yeah, so I'm just gonna get out green stuff here from these two tins. Though green stuff looks like it should be one-to-one. -one. If you've watched my videos before, you know that you should always use a little more yellow than you do blue. And before I cut my green stuff, I have my handy-dandy water here. I'm gonna make sure that I wet my tool because this stuff is is gross sticky. Anytime you're, hand, you're touching green stuff with a tool, it needs to be at least wet with water if not something else. And the same thing if you're touching green stuff with your fingers, you should always wet them with some water so that it doesn't stick and get all stuck in your fingerprints. So when mixing up your green stuff, you want about a 60% yellow mix to a 40% blue mix to get the ideal mix. You can always mess with that mix. If you put more blue in it, it's gonna be harder, the texture of it when you're sculpting. So I don't know if that's 60, 40, but you know, close enough. So I'm gonna wet my fingers to make sure that it doesn't stick. And then I'm gonna take the two parts and I'm gonna mix them together. Um, some people ask me, what kind of green stuff do you use? There's only one kind of green stuff. A bunch of different companies sell it, but I believe it all comes from the same manufacturer, which is Nidatite, K-N-E-A-D-A-T-I-T-E, -E, I think. If you get green stuff, it's probably going to come from Nidatite, so it doesn't matter who you buy your green stuff from, it's probably all going to be the same. Um, although I say that, I've never encountered any uh, contraband green stuff that doesn't work properly. Um, my stuff's always been good, but I tend to get mine from places like Gale Force 9. Green stuff, as I mentioned before, is super sticky, which is the reason that you really want to get on top of your lubrication game, because uh, it can really ruin your day if you're in the middle of sculpting something and you've got a, a nice detail, like, just the way you like it, and then the stuff sticks to your tool and the detail pulls away or something like that. Uh, so you definitely want to avoid that as much as you can. But really, this video is just to assure people who seem to get really worried whenever I tell them to put Nivea on their putty that it's going to ruin everything and that no paint will ever stick to it. I've literally never washed anything that I've sculpted with Nivea um, and then subsequently painted, and I've never had any issues with primer or paint sticking to the models. So I'm just putting on a glove here because I realized I have this kind of annoying cut on my thumb. Uh, so I should probably protect it. Some green stuff packaging comes with a warning on it. I, I've literally gotten a package once that said, warning, cancer, with no further indication. I think it's because this stuff is generally not great for you to ingest or like use. Some people swear that you have to use gloves all the time. I should use gloves more than I do, but I... I don't always remember to just because they're it's kind of annoying to work with gloves just keep that in mind like if you want to be very cautious uh maybe get a glove for when you're working with it it's only really for the mixing portion which isn't too bad and then once you get it on the model you don't really need a glove anymore because you're not touching it you're just using your tools i've bought like kitchen gloves the kind that you use when you're washing dishes because they're reusable you don't have to throw them out typically a problem that a lot of people have when they're mixing green stuff is they mix too much green stuff if you mix too much green stuff take the amount that you want to use to put on your model let's just say it's like a small amount like like this much keep that out to work with take the rest of your green stuff flatten it into as thin a sheet as you can or 
bust it off and put it into little balls, put that in a separate container and stick that container in the freezer. Because the chemical process of the green stuff curing is if you deny it heat, it'll set slower. And if you add heat by using something like a halogen lamp on your green stuff, it'll set faster. So that's something you can use to your advantage. Take your extra green stuff, put it in container, put the container in the freezer. And it should be, if you put it in immediately when you mix the green stuff and your freezer is decently cold, it can last for up to two, maybe three days. But after that, it gets hard to work with. So don't do it too long. But if you're using, uh, you're doing a full day of sculpting, you think you're gonna be using a lot of green stuff, you can use that throughout the day. Just pop it in the freezer as you need it, pop it out, put the extra back in the freezer, and it's very helpful. I'm gonna make sure this is very dry so that I don't have any problems with the green stuff sticking to the plastic card. You're lucky I like you so much because the idea of touching green stuff with a tool with no lubricant makes my skin crawl. I need to get a really shitty tool that I don't care about. Uh, oh, the back of this thing, that'll work. Let's divide this green stuff into four different blobs for each of our test areas. And I'm keeping everything I'm using wet so that it doesn't stick. Uh, let's go one, two, three, four. Get any um, putty on your tools. You can just touch it and the green stuff is usually sticky enough to pull the putty off your tools. And we'll take the nothing one. So this is a little wet, try to dry it out. You got your nothing green stuff. There is no lubrication on this top thing of green stuff. And because it's the stickiest material in the universe, it already sticks pretty well to that piece of plastic card. Oh God, this pains me. It pains me to do this. See this? I got a metal tool. I'm not going to use... I typically tell people to use silicone tools. I'm not going to touch green stuff with a silicone tool without lubrication because that's a sure recipe for a ruined silicone tool. Yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and sculpt this with no lubricant. Oh, mmm. Feels so good. Oh, look at that. Sticking to my tool. Getting nasty. Oh, pulling it off the surface that it's attached to. Oh, look at that tasty film of green stuff on that tool. Hey, you know what? I think you need a close up. There we go. Look at that. Look at that. Mm. Oh, it won't even stick to the thing it's on because it's... Okay, you get the idea. Sculpting with green stuff without lubrication is a nightmare. Yeah, it wants to stick to my finger more than it wants to stick to the, the surface it's on. It's pulling up. This is why we need to lubricate. This is why we don't do green stuff without lubrication. So I will leave this on here for the sake of painting, but to make my life... Like, this tool is now a mess. If this happens to your tools, you can generally wait for the green stuff to dry. And then once it's fully dried and hardened, you can take like a kind of sharp tool and scrape it off. That should work pretty well. Don't do this to a silicone tool, it's sad. So this is technically nothing, but I want to smooth this strip across so I can show you the painting stuff. Uh, so I'm just going to wet my finger a bit. And already, so much easier to just pull this stuff across where I want it because I've got lubrication. And lubrication is our friend. So to review, Nothing equals pain. Next, we're going to do with water. So again, I want to make sure my surface is dry because I want the green stuff to stick to it. Uh, you saw with that first one, the green stuff was pulling up. If you're working on a surface like this, that's like plastic hard or something like that, it's smooth and you want green stuff to stick to it. Sometimes it won't stick that well, simply because the surface is so smooth and it's not much to, not much purchase. Take an X-Acto knife or you can take one of these like seam scrapers or flash scrapers and you can just go and just like do some scratching on the surface where you want the green stuff to go and that just gives it a rough surface to stick to do this before you put any putty on it because the stuff will fall off and stick to your putty but yeah just scrape it up nice you can do cross hatching in there and then it'll stick better so that's pro tip just like score it you can see there it's been scored so that it'll have something uh to stick to better Next, water. So we've got our dry surface here. It's been scored. I've got my lump of green stuff here. I'm going to stick it on there. And I'm going to wet my finger with some water. Smear it across. I'm doing this with my finger because I want to reach a point where it does get sticky again. So you can see. Uh, there's a lump in there. Don't judge me. Okay, just getting it across. The water's starting to go now. Um, so at this point, I'd want to re-wet my tool to continue moving it across. So yeah, it's starting to get sticky here. Um, yeah, and like the thing is, you can use water to sculpt green stuff. That's fine. Like, I'm going to get this tool. I'm going to go get it wet in the water. So it's wet. You can like go in here and do some of these. The thing is, like water works fine. It's just that water doesn't last as long as these other lubricants. So you're going to have to keep like re-wetting your tool if you want to keep using water on the stuff. 
And then you also risk the, the fact that the green stuff might start sticking to your tools. Not so bad on a metal tool, because like we said, you can scrape it off. But when you're starting to use the silicone shapers, which are expensive, you don't want uh, anything that lets the green stuff stick to your tools, because that'll do some damage to a silicone shaper and it'll be really hard to get it off. You can't just peel it off like you would on a normal metal tool. It's also harder like when you're like trying to smooth stuff, because like I'm trying to pull this across and smooth and it's still like, it's still catching on the green stuff. It's not super smooth. If I try to like kind of paint it around, it, it's tacky. I don't know if you can see that, but you can feel it when you're using it, that it, it gets tacky with the tool and gets stuck on it. Um, but yeah, you can use water. If all you've got is water, it works. It just means you have to lubricate your tools more frequently. You have to keep going back to that water jug to keep them lubed up and smooth for what you're trying to do. Anyway, so that's the water. All right, next, my go-to absolute favorite is Nivea. This was introduced to me by my dear, sweet hobby brother, Hydra. Um, he got it from another sculptor. And like, you can use any hand cream. It doesn't have to be Nivea, but uh, Nivea works really well. It's very thick, so it like sits on the tools pretty well. It comes in all kinds of different shapes and sizes. You can get big honking Nivea containers like this that have like, what's that, 150 milliliters in them. Uh, you can get ones that have little babies on top if you like little babies and moms. Oh, look how cute. You can get little tiny Nivea things like this. In fact, you can get even smaller ones than this, I think. This is 30 milliliters, but this is very portable to just chuck in like a, a hobby kit. Um, yeah. So, I of course use my custom branded Creature Conference Nivea, which is literally just a Creature Conference sticker stuck on top of a tube of Nivea, a tin of Nivea. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my putty and I'm going to stick it to here like I did with the other ones. This isn't scored, but I think it'll be fun. Because Nivea is so good, it doesn't stick. So again, keep your fingers wet when you're applying the, uh, the green stuff. Not too wet that it slops all over your model, but just damp, moist. Moist, there's a word everyone loves. And yeah, just until you get it nice and stuck. And then what you want to do is you take your tin of Nivea. Can't see it because it's all white. But uh, you take your tool use the same metal one and you just lightly run it through the putty the the cream like I have way too much cream on this right now and then what I usually do is I store it on the back of my hand the excess cream so I'll just like just take my hand just put it here if you're ever wondering this is the softest part of my hand don't wipe your nose with it you get a really soft nose and I'm pretty much taking all of the Nivea off the tool when I'm doing this like when you look at it you can see that there's like a there's a skim on there. You can see a little bit of the white, but it's mostly just the oil. In fact, I could take even more white off this. Like this doesn't even need that much. I could smear it off to a point where it's almost imperceptible. But there's like a there's a thin film of oil on that tool, um, and that's more than enough. So, and then what you do with this is just like you would with the other one. Let's just smooth this out, and that is like barely catching on the tool. Maybe I need to put a little more Nivea on there. But it just glides. Like, it's like butter. I don't know if you can see. Look at, like, I'm just sliding right off this thing. This is how effective the Nivea is. This is why when I tell people to sculpt with Nivea, and they actually listen to me, they come back to me, and they're like, oh my god, this has changed my life. You do not understand. I'm like, no, I do understand, friend. I've been there. Like, look at that. There's no resistance. And what's happening is that I think I'm putting like a little film of Nivea on the actual putty. And I know you're worried. I know you're like, oh my God, the paint's not gonna stick. Trust me, the paint is gonna stick. Um, so yeah, just flying off that thing, which is totally different from what we saw with the water. The other thing is that when you're using your super expensive silicone shapers, um, you can get similarly a skim of Nivea on them, again oil you can see a bit of it on there but not too much and then these become paint brushes for putty like you can do virtually anything so i typically use royal sovereign royal sovereign i don't have any kind of relationship with them uh but they're the best ones i've seen you can get cheap silicone shapers on amazon you will have cheap amazon results but if you can work with those that's fine i just i've been burned too many times that i don't want to do that so yeah, like this is like so smooth. It's like I'm not even touching green stuff at all. It's it's kind of amazing that uh, just how smooth this process gets. And then you can really kind of work it around with these to get different shapes in there. Um, I should smear this across like I did with the other ones. 
So I'm going to use my metal tool for that because it's easier to push green stuff with a metal tool than with a silicone tool. Okay, honestly, when you're dealing with it in this large scale, you could sometimes just use your fingers. So get some Nivea on your fingers and it might be easier to just move it across that way. And again, sliding right across. No worries. And oh, I picked up a piece of green stuff. Whoops. But it comes right off. Get on there, you filthy animal. The only downside of using Nivea with your green stuff is that um, if you have a bit like this that you've, you've applied Nivea to and you try to shove a blob of green stuff on top, you can do it, it just might get challenging because the, re the green stuff doesn't want to stick to your tools because of the layer of Nibia on it and it, it may not want to stick to um, the other blob of green stuff. But I think I've done it and it hasn't been that bad. Just be aware that um, the Nivea is not just on my tool or my finger anymore, it's also on the green stuff. So the surface of the green stuff is getting slicker itself. So yeah, your fingers are great sculpting tools. Especially when you're using Nivea because stuff doesn't stick to them. Yes, so if you're not convinced already and you're still like, I don't know, man, what about Vaseline? Let's see, because honestly, I have zero experience. So I'm as interested as you are. Because some people say that that's what they use. They use Vaseline. But I, those people also say that you should uh, wash your models after, which is a pain in the ass if you ask me. So I've got just like a standard brand name, Vaseline, but this is petroleum jelly. You can... Buy whatever kind. This is just the kind I had kicking around. Let's go in here and get a gob of Vaseline. Gob. Stick it on the back of my hand. So, oh, I learned something when uh, I was talking to people about using um, lubricants and Nivea and stuff like that um, with your sculpting. There is a condition, I think it's called blenophobia. And blenophobia is the fear of slime. Take that to your next pub quiz. Blenophobia. The fear of slime. How cool is that? Well, not cool for the people who experience it, but cool that there's a term for fearing slime. Um, and there was someone who reached out to me who suffers from blenophobia, and they said, like, you know, what am I going to do? Because I I suffer from blenophobia. I don't want to touch creams. Like, they, they weird me out. Um, how can I use this, this tip? And again, Hydra came up with a really good idea where you take like the Vaseline or you take the Nivea or whatever you're using and you get a sponge. Like just say this is a sponge. And what you do is you you lube up that sponge with the lubricant like you sh get, or you get a friend of yours or if you can do it with gloves, if that's comfortable for you, you get a bunch of the Vaseline or a bunch of the Nivea and you smear it into the sponge. And then what happens is the sponge kind of holds it. And then all you have to do is when you're sculpting is you take your tool and you just run it through the sponge like that. And it'll pick up the oil. Because you don't need a lot, you can just do that. So that's a tip for people who don't like the consistency of Nivea and don't want to touch it. If you can do it with gloves, get it on your gloves, smear it on into a sponge, and then just rub your tools through it, and that should be good. Um, a tip that Simon got from some master sculptor who he met who I think was sculpting with Fimo? And I think that if you use alcohol with Fimo, it like smooths it or something like that. So he uses that trick where he'll store his rubbing alcohol in this sponge um, so that he can just like rub his tool through the, the rubbing alcohol to lube it up for use with the Fimo. All right, Vaseline. I really don't know how this is going to work. So I'm going to get my finger. I'm going to get some Vaseline on it. And I'm just going to smear this. I can see the slime layer on there already. That sexy Vaseline. I can actually see it building up on the putty. I guess the Nivea does that a bit. But I think what happens with the Nivea is it gets, like, absorbed in. Um, I don't know how that's going to happen with this petroleum jelly. But it is smooth. It's got, you can see now, I've got, like, a good layer on there. And I'm just sliding my finger over it and not picking up anything. Uh, so, if you have it and you don't want to buy Nivea, I mean, you could use it. But let's see what happens in the second part of this test where I'm going to prime them and paint them and see if the paint sticks. Oh. Same handy-dandy spoon tool, and I will lube that up back of my hand with some Vaseline. Oh, it's so slimy. Sorry for anyone who suffers from blenophobia who has to watch this slimy video. I should put trigger warning slime on the front of this. So, yeah, like, the to me, the performance feels um, comparable to what you, what you get with Nivea. Um... Although, I don't know if it's just that I wasn't as careful. Maybe I need to wipe more of this off because it looks like it's like blobbing up. Maybe I don't. Maybe that's a user error thing. 
but uh, I would definitely recommend that if you're using Vaseline, even before we've done the test with the primer, that you, you don't put a ton on your tool because it probably doesn't need that much. It probably just needs like a, a thin skim of oil on it like we saw with Nivea. Okay, like feels pretty good. I'm gonna get out my uh, silicone shaper, get some Vaseline on that, smear most of it off. I gotta remember to wash these tools. Um, yeah, and then go in here. No, it's pretty good. No stickage. Yeah, this this is this is good. Like this makes the green stuff as pleasant to use as the Nibia does, which is cool. Right, let's label it. Again, smearing up my tool. The slimy nets. Okay. I promise not to sing Stone Temple Pilots while I'm doing this Vaseline test. Now it's in my head. Man, S's are hard to sculpt. Let's use one of these. There you go. Vaseline. So what I'm going to do now is that I've got these four samples. So no lubrication with water, with Nivea, and with Vaseline. So you've seen the, the difference here. Like how much, how hard it was to sculpt with no lubrication. How it was easier with water, but it still was a bit tough. Um, how Nivea, you could just slide right over it, and how we've got the similar kind of like sliding right over it thing with Vaseline. So what I'm going to do next is that I'm going to take these, I'm going to let them dry. Um, it's important that anytime you're sculpting with uh, green stuff, or any kind of epoxy putty, that you let it fully cure before you try and do anything else with it, um, paint-wise. But even if you're just like sculpting something else onto the model, I would recommend waiting for it to fully cure before you go and sculpt your next layer of detail. Because then you're less likely to like screw up and like sh shove your finger to something you just sculpted, which I think I just did there. And I squished this with this finger while I was trying to sculpt there. So yeah, let it fully cure. Um, I recommend at least six hours, better 12. If you can wait a whole day, that's awesome. Let's let it dry and then try to prime them and see how well the primer sticks with this, this stuff on it. And interestingly, I think I got a little bit of Nivea around on the plastic card here, and I definitely got some Vaseline around here. So that'll be good to see whether the primer sticks to the putty, but not the stuff on the plastic card, because maybe the putty's absorbing the uh, the creams or the, the the petroleum jelly, and the plastic card is not. But anyway, you get to see it immediately. So let's go see how it works with uh, some primer on it. So I took what we just sculpted and I primed it with Games Workshop black spray primer and you can already see before we've done anything here uh look at that the top three and look at the bottom one see a difference the top three look pretty matte and the bottom one looks kind of satin finish getting a little bit glossy so already you should be worried so what i did was i did that sculpting i waited about a day and then i primed it so it was the putty was given a good amount of time to i'd say too much time to set and I didn't clean it, I didn't wipe it off, I didn't do anything, I just left it as it was from uh, that sculpting that we just recorded. And in case you're wondering, here are our labels. So we've got Vaseline on the bottom, and then Nivea above it, and then the water, and then nothing. Like I said, you can already see that the, the Vaseline one has a little more, kind of, it's a little more reflective than the other two. But let's take a close-up look. So for the first one, where we were sculpting with no lubricant, you can see that it got a pretty good um, prime on it. Just rubbing my finger over it. Nothing's coming off there. The green stuff. Take a tool. Let's see how resistant it is. Maybe I'm scratching off a little bit, but that's like a, a metal tool. So that's, that's not a usual use case. Water, similarly. Uh, that, that primer stand on there, it's not coming off. Nivea, to be clear, we did not wash this. We did not do anything to it. Pretty fine. Vaseline, you can already see that even before I've like rubbed this thing, touched this thing, there is green stuff showing through. Like right in here, there's some green, here's some green, here's some more green, some green down here. So already you can see just here between Nivea and Vaseline that you don't have that with the Nivea. They're, there might be a little bit there, but um, but let's see. And you can also see around the Vaseline. Like I said, that I was gonna leave some some Nivea uncleaned up on the card here, and then I got some Vaseline around this. The card there around the Nivea is fine. Like the the prime job looks the same as the two above, but you can see around the Vaseline one that there's you get some white showing through there. 
and that the primer didn't take that well to it because we use because of the Vaseline and because we didn't wash it. Um, and if we just rub it, look at that already, green stuff's coming right off. Like you saw me rub the other two, I'm just using my finger. I got nothing on it, but this is not a good prime job, and that's not to be like that's not unexpected. Oh, you can even get it off the card there. So it's all coming off there. So it's not unexpected. Like if you use the Vaseline to lubricate your green stuff, the people who use that kind of approach, they advocate to wash your models before you prime them. But what I wanted to show here is that you do not have to pr wash your models when you use Nivea. Nivea is great. It evaporates or it gets soaked in and you do not have to wash your models. You still get a good prime on it. Now it's got a little bit shiny because I just shined it up with my finger oils. Please. Use Nivea to sculpt your models. Don't worry about having to wash them afterwards. You don't have to. Just as if, as if you were using no lubricant or water, Nivea works just the same. Uh, but if you're gonna use Vaseline, that's fine, but I wouldn't bother because as you see here, you have to wash your models before you prime them. And I don't wanna wash my models. I just wanna be lazy and just slap some paint on them. And Nivea allows me to do that. Hopefully that test was very illustrative for you. Don't wash your models with Nivea. You're good. Use Nivea to lube your sculpting tools and you're gonna be happy as a clam. All right, so now you all know to use Nivea to lube your tools when you're sculpting with green stuff. However, how are you gonna remember that? To help you remember, I made this stick. It puts the lotion on its tools. Let me know if you get the reference. But I got the sticker. How am I gonna get the sticker to you? So we're gonna have a little giveaway. This is gonna be a first come first serve giveaway because I only have so many of these things. So the first 20 people who comment on this post on Patreon are going to get a sticker in the mail. So the second, third, fourth, and fifth person to comment on this post are going to get their own little travel sized tins of Nivea. And the first person to comment on this post over on Patreon is going to get this big honkin', I'm going to call this a lifetime supply of Nivea cream. You're never going to have to refill this. Just for commenting on the post, you don't have to be a patron, it's an open post, anyone can comment on it, but you must comment on Patreon. Not on YouTube, not on Instagram, not anywhere else, you gotta go over to Patreon, leave a comment on the Nivea Lube giveaway post, and let me know what you want to sculpt with your new supply of Nivea. So head on over to my Patreon, you have until October 31st, Halloween, to leave a comment on this post, any comments you like, maybe telling me what you thought about it. Tell me about whether you've tried using Nivea, whether you're excited about it, and you'll get something for it. Four people are going to win their own little Nivea tubs, and one person's going to win a lifetime supply. Head over to my Patreon. The link is in the description below. Thanks a lot, and happy sculpting. Two times a thing has rendered me was drunk with a bell.